Hare Krishna. Mm. Hare Krishna Thank Maharaj. You. Welcome to the call. Thank you so much. Today we are very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami Maharaj with us on early morning Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. Prabhuji will continue to enlighten us on, Bhagav on Srimad Bhagavatam from Canto 5, Chapter 10, Verse Number 17. Maharaj, whenever you're ready, you may take the call over. Om Agyanti Mirandasya Gnajana Salakaya Chaksu Um Militam Yenitas Mai Sri Guruvena Maha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Staptitam Yenavutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padantikam Jai Sri Krishna Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavari Pacheli Nainir Vasesa Sunyavari Pastyatya Deve Satarine Anchakalpata Rubisya Kripa Sindhu Pe Baja Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namahuna Maha Jai Si Krishna Tritan Tanandusri Advaita Gadahar Srivas Sri Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 5 Chapter 10 Verse number 17 Naham Vishanka Sura Raja Rajan Natrikasaksulam Nayashma Danda Nagyarka Soma Nila Vita Pastrach Chanke Brisam Brahma Kula Vamanat Translation My dear sir so King Rahugana is speaking to Bart, Jud Bart. My dear sir, I am not at all afraid of the thunderbolt of King Indra, nor am I afraid of the serpentine piercing trident of Lord Shiva. I do not care about the punishment of Yamaraj, the superintendent of death, nor am I afraid of fire, scorching sun, moon, when nor the weapons of Kuvera. Yet I'm afraid of offending a Brahmana. I'm very much afraid of this. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada's purport. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was instructing Rupa Goswama Dasvameda Ghat and Prayag, he pointed out very clearly the seriousness of offending a Vaishnava. He compared the Vaishnava Papara to Hati Mata, or Mad Elephant. When a mad elephant enters a garden, it spoils all the fruits and flowers. Similarly, if one offends a Vaishnava, he spoils all his spiritual essence. Offending a Brahmin is very dangerous, and this was known to Maharaj Rahugana. He therefore frankly admitted his fault. There are many dangerous things, thunderbolts, fire, Yamaraj's punishment, the punishment of Lord Shiva's trident and so forth. When none is considered as serious as offending a Brahmana like Jada Bhart. Therefore, Maharaj Rahugana immediately descended from his palace room and fell flat before the lotus feet of Brahmana Jad Bharat, just to be excused. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, the process of execution of devotional service consists of two considerations that must be carefully followed. The things that are recommended to do and the things that are indicated to avoid. Mm -hmm. These are called one is called vidis, one thing is to do, and the other is called nishedas, or things to avoid. Mm -hmm. 
And there's a list on both sides that their devotion gives us a very clear, de detailed listing with explanations of the things that are favorable for a devotional service and things that are unfavorable for devotional service. Offense against a devotee is considered to be extremely unfavorable. And depending on that devotee, the severity of the offense is calculated. The more advanced that devotee is, the greater that offense is. And here the indication is Brahmanas. Brahmanas, by classification, are considered to be the leaders of human society. They give spiritual direction. They are always engaged in giving uh, advice to others who are in positions of rulership. Um, they are considered the topmost. Of course, and then we have Vaishnavas. A Vaishnava is superior to a Brahmana, but if a Vaishnava is also a Brahmana, then that is considered to be topmost in the sense that one is serving the Lord in the best possible. In other words, one is performing that activity that is beneficial for human society. Therefore, in the listings of the 10 offenses, which we diligently make sure we recite on initiation days and also in practically all of our temples around the world, the 10 offenses to the, the, the holy name are every day recited as part of the morning program. And the first is called Hati Mata or Mad Elephant Offense. Uh, and the, the actual statement is uh, one should not vilify or criticize or offend in any way those who have engaged themselves in preaching the glories of the Lord. And that's the nature, or that is the activity of the Ramanas. Ma, the analogy is quite clear. It's a nice analogy. If you have a garden, you have flowers, fruits, and nice arrangements of shrubbery and and uh, if you let an elephant in, then there's nothing left of your garden. It's, it's trampled to death. So um, we carefully execute our devotional service, chanting the holy names of the Lord, engaging in practical service activities, associating with devotees, and we are making spiritual advancement. What are we doing? We are purifying our heart. We are uh, removing those coverings over the soul, which are materially acquired due to our association with this material energy. It's a gradual process. But then again, one has to be uh, very much uh, clear, or you might say, what's the word? Uh, conscious of not committing offenses. So in the process of bhakti, these things are called anartas. There are 16 anartas, anartas that are philosophical misconceptions. There are six, there are four, I'm, I'm say four anarthas that are philosophical misconceptions. There are four anarthas that are categorized as pious activities. There are four anarthas that are categorized as impious activities. 
and there are four narthas that are categorized as aparad. If you look at the word aparad, a p a r a d h a, you'll see the word radha in there. Radha stands for the topmost personality in devotional practice, Shimati Radharani. And so the word aparad is interesting. That means against radha or against pure devotional service. Interesting how the word plays itself out, aparada. So you'll see that in the, probably in the word for word offense is aparad. So we want to avoid that by being very diligent. Is it there? Let's see. No. Uh, hmm? No, I don't see that word here. Yeah, and the other word is avamana. Avamana, that's a different particular word. But yeah, you'll find that that is the standard word for offenses, aparad, against radha, or that which is against the process of advancement in devotional service. So there are four aparads that are mentioned, and that is to offend the Lord, the deity of the Lord, to offend the holy name, to offend Vaishnavas, and to offend um, people in general. Now, the three of them, to offend the holy name, to offend the Lord in the form of his deity, and to offend, offend people in general, one can be, one can reduce the reactions of that offense simply by continuous, and I use that word as an emphasis, continuous chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So if one commits offenses there, one makes it a point to avoid doing that again and chants the holy name continuously for an extended period of time, gradually that offense will be neutralized. But offenses against the Vaishnavas cannot be neutralized or removed simply by chanting the holy name, not possible. It's the most severe of all offenses as is being pointed out here. So what one has to do, and we see that in the actions of uh, uh, Maharaj Ruhuganan, he jumped down off his palaquin <laughs> and he immediately offered, he fell flat on the ground like that. And that's, you know, That was mentioned in the purport, but that's also mentioned in the pre I think in one of the verses that he was aware of what he had done. And after hearing Jada Bharat speak, he understood that this person was not an ordinary person. He's a great soul. And he's wearing a Brahmin thread. So he, he was clear that this person is a Brahmana. And so he came to his senses and this is what one does when one offends a devotee. And you fall flat in front of that devotee, offering sincere obeisances from the heart, praying for the mercy of that devotee and asking forgiveness. And the last thing is you request, seriously request, uh, let me do some service for you. Please instruct me. This is the only a remedy for offending a Vaishnava. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in, it's mentioned in the Chaitanya Bhagavat, in the very later parts of Chaitanya Bhagavat, in the Antya Lila, Antya Kanda it's called, Antya Kanda. He says that if one offends the devotee of the Lord, he is drinking poison. And if he drinks poison, 
he dies. And if one praises, glorifies the devotee of the Lord, he is drinking nectar, he lives forever. Immortality. And so there are six ways one can offend a Vaishnava. And I'll mention these six, and this is given by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. In one of his writings, um, I'm not exactly able to recall which particular writing, but it's there where he says there are six ways and uh, they are listed in order of severity. The first one and the most severe is to kill a Vaishnava. The second one down the line is to blaspheme, blaspheme a Vaishnava. The third is to become envious of a Vaishnava. The fourth is to become angry at a Vaishnava. The fifth, and we're going down the list in least becoming least severe, is to uh, mm -hmm. hmm, let me think about it. The fifth is to not honor a Vaishnava. And the sixth and the most least, and you, this is interesting too, is not to become happy when you see a Vaishnava. Mm -hmm. That's also an offense. If you come in contact with a devotee and you don't feel happy, you are committing an offense. So that one, when you feel, you don't feel happy seeing a Vaishnava, then what do you do? You pay your obeisances to that Vaishnava and then there's no offense. But the others are more severe. You can see killing, blaspheme, envy, anger, failing to respect like that. So if we can remember these six and carefully avoid them. But finding fault is a, is a characteristic or we might say a very bad quality. When we find fault with others, we create a mentality that is not good. Of course, you see for the sake of instructions a spiritual teacher in giving discourses might point out how the non-devotees live their life in such a way as to waste their life, ruin their life, and eventually create so much suffering for themselves and others. That is not offense. That is simply describing what we should avoid and what material life is actually about. But when it comes to devotees, then one should always try, as it says, there are two types of uh, insects, two particular types. One is a bee and one is a fly. A bee will go for the honey, the sweetness, the fly will go for the sores, for the contamination, the garbage. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada said, be a bee. <laughs> in other words, there's if you come in contact with a devotee, there's four things you may experience. One is you may just find faults see faults that's the worst lower than that is to see good qualities and faults side by side a person has faults but they also have good qualities higher than that is to see a person's apparent faults as potential good qualities and higher than that is not to see any faults at all. Even if they're there, you don't see them. 
that is pristine or pure consciousness. And so where do we fit in? Generally we fit in the second one. We, we can see the faults of someone and we can also see their good qualities. So what we do is we focus on the good qualities and reject, neglect, uh, forget about the so-called faults that we see. It's not wrong to see faults, but it's wrong to dwell on them. And it's very wrong to speak about them. There's three levels of offenses. We have that in the story with the, Bra the Brahmins, actually it was the Devas, the Devatars, in the higher planets were discussing, well, who is the most powerful? Is it Brahma? Is it Shiva? Or is it Vishnu? Who is the best? Who is actually the supreme? So in order to actually make a test, they sent Brigamuni to perform an experiment and come up with the answer. So Briga was off. Now Briga, he went first to Brahma. Now Brahma is his father because Briga was the son of Brahma. So he came to Brahma and Brahma was so happy to see his son that he greeted him. But Briga acted very coldly, didn't respond to Brahma's uh, you know, friendliness or his welcome. And then Brahma, Brahman, Lord Brahma, that is, became angry. And then Brigu noted, noted his anger and left. Then he went to Lord Shiva when Kailash and Shiva was there with Parvati. He came in. Now Shiva's his brother because they're both sons of Brahma. So when he came in, Shiva was so happy to see him. He got up from being with Parvati and he started coming to embrace his brother. But Bigo said, you know, you have ashes, you associate with low class people, you got crematory and ashes all over your body. Don't touch me. Wow. You know, Brahma is called I mean, uh, yeah, Shiva is called Asutos. Asutos means one who is easily pleased and easily angered. So Shiva became very angry, took out his trident, and he was about to punish Brigu. But Parvati was there and she stopped him. He said, no, it's your brother. Excuse him. But Brigu noted Shiva became angry and then he left and somehow he was able to go to Sweta Dweep, the island where Lord Vishnu resides in the material world with his consort Lakshmi. He came in and uh, he immediately when the Lord saw him he said oh Brigo, Brigo you've come. I'm so happy to see you. Briga didn't say anything. He went right up to Lord Vishnu and kicked him in the chest. Didn't say a word. He just immediately kicked him. Lord Vishnu turned to Briga and said, Oh, my Briga, you know, my, I am a Kshatriya and my chest is very hard. You must have hurt your foot. Let me massage your feet. Brigo could understand by the reaction of Lord Vishnu that he is actually the Supreme. Of course, Lakshmi didn't like that at all. And she became angry. And uh, she immediately left and went to the material world. And that's a whole beautiful story, which is actually the unfolding of that famous temple, Tirupati, in uh, South India. That, that deity there, which is uh, Ventekeshwara, was actually 
the manifestation of this particular pastime of Bhrigu kicking Lord Vishnu. Well, that's a long story. It takes about an hour just to tell the whole pastime. But then Bhrigu reported back and said, yes, it's no doubt that Vishnu actually is the Supreme. So here we, you see three gradations of offenses. The first one was offense in the mind by not responding to Brahma. The second was offense by words in relationship to Shiva. And the third was the corporal of all offense, offense by causing or trying to cause harm, which he directed toward Lord Vishnu. So these are the three ways that one may offend a person. So you might say, what happens if wrong thoughts come into the mind? The problem is that they are not, it's, I mean, the, the good thing is they're not offense until you actually act on them. But the problem is if you leave them in the mind, they grow. Anything you think about will gain strength through the process of thinking on it. And that's why you see people who are so-called good doers in the world, they try to rid the world of evil. And they're always thinking about people and activities which are evil. They also pick up that energy and also become, they develop some bad qualities because of that. So even if you think of something evil or wrong, in the right way, you also increase the quality of that thought or the effect of that thought. But therefore, even if, th if, if you start thinking bad about a person or finding yourself criticizing, stop it <laughs> immediately and look for something to replace that that is positive, that is devotional, like that. That was one of the first trainings that we give devotees who come to Krishna consciousness, not to ca carry with you in your mind wrong thoughts or offensive thoughts, materialistic desires in the mind. These things take away from the enthusiasm that is required in order to execute devotional service successfully. So one has to be diligent to keep the mind always in a favorable situation. And that is Krishna consciousness. Therefore, we say always think of Krishna, always think of ways to serve Krishna, and especially always think of ways to serve the devotees. If we have a desire to serve the devotees, rather than finding fault with the devotees or neglecting devotees, then we will make nice progress in Krishna consciousness. This will please Krishna. Like that. So they say to find fault with another means to grab onto their shadow. The shadow of the person is his faults or her faults. The shadow is not really the real person. It's simply a reflection of the form of the person. So in the same way, offenses really have no mean, I mean, negative things because it's about the body. And that person is not the body, it's the soul. Now, there's another aspect to this. If someone is acting in the wrong way and is causing offense to others or is just offensive by nature, how do you react? How do you respond? Do you feel offended yourself? Do you feel defensive yourself? What do you do? Or what don't you do? And uh, that is a long discussion, <laughs> which opens up the door to many possibilities according to time, place, and personality. But the essential principle that we're dealing here was to show, and King Rahugana is very uh, clear that he's not afraid of things that are actually 
everyone's afraid of. I mean, a thunderbolt of Indra is so powerful it can destroy a mountain. The, the, the trident of Lord Shiva is, yeah, very, very powerful weapon. The punishment of Yamaraj is quite thorough. One can suffer from fire, scorching sun. The moon can also cause difficulties. Wind, Kuvera has many weapons. He's the head of the Yakshas, who are a very strong race of uh, lower class people. Although he's the treasurer of the, of the demigods, he is also the head of the Yakshas. And they are his offspring. So he says, I am a friend. So this is something that is very uh, important to understand, one should be very aware that it's easy to commit offenses and one should be always in the right consciousness. And if you're in the consciousness of trying to serve or if you're in the consciousness of feeling happy in the association of devotees, you will not commit offenses like that. So sometimes, and we see there are devotees who cannot associate with other devotees because of offenses. If one continually makes offenses to devotees, Krishna will drive that person out of the association of devotees. The devotees will wonder, why don't I associate with devotees? I have no, no desire to. Why? Because the, the offensive mentality reigns supreme. We have stories in, in the Shastras, such as when Srivas Thakur, he is a great, well, he's actually one of the Panchatattva, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara Srivas are the five personalities of the Panchatattva. And Srivas is actually an incarnation of Narada Muni who appears in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes to assist the Lord. Now he's a great devotee of the Lord and the Lord spends much time in the house of Srivas. But Srivas was envied by some of his neighbors and there was one particular neighbor, his name was Gopal Chapala <laughs> and he didn't like Srivas for whatever reason. So he wanted to make Srivas look like something else that he was. So one night he took many articles that are used in worship of Durga Mata and he placed those articles on the doorway or in the doorway of Srivas Thakur's home, such as a bottle of wine, a red rose and various other articles for worshiping Durga Devi. When Srivas came out, he saw the articles and it was interesting how he responded. He said, oh, and he called the neighbors over. He said, now you know what I am. He didn't try to hide it. He didn't try to defend himself. He actually acted like Oh, this is me. Of course, no one believed him because they knew the quality of his devotion. He was just exhibiting his natural humility and not trying to find fault with the person who found fault. This is another thing to find fault with the fault finder. One should avoid that also. And that's a whole other subject. But continuing on with this particular pastime, after three days, Gopal Chapala came down with a very severe uh, case of leprosy. And so much so he had to leave the general society and live at the banks of the Ganga. He could not associate with anyone. So he was living on the banks of the Ganges. One day, Lord Chaitanya was passing and now he's suffering from the reactions of his 
his offense. He sees Lord Chaitanya and he says, my dear Lord, you know, please save me from this suffering. Lord Chaitanya immediately looked at him in an angry way. He said, you think you are suffering now? This is just the beginning. Because you are offense to Srivas, you will suffer much more than this. And the Lord immediately turned around and left. After some time, I think it was about three months later, the Lord happened to pass by that same place and Gopal Chapla was there. And now his suffering was practically unbearable. And then this time he was more, what we say, what's the word? Apologetic, sorry. Uh, and he fell fully at the feet of Lord Chaitanya and begged from all of his heart to please be relieved of his suffering. The Lord took compassion upon him and said, I can't do anything. I don't have the power. But if you go to Srivas and you beg forgiveness to him, if he, if, if he uh, frees you from this suffering, if he forgives you, then you are forgiven. And that's what he did. And he fell at the feet of Sri Vastakura, praying, begging, explaining how he was such a fool, acting in such an offensive way, and begged forgiveness. Sri Vast immediately forgave him, but then he gave him some service. He said, you should take initiation into Krishna consciousness. So he directed him towards one particular guru. And then this person went to that guru, took shelter there, and that became trained as a devotee under the care of that guru and became a great Vaishnava. His name became Devananda. And he writes beautiful, beautiful, beautiful poetry in glorification of the Vaishnavas which is considered to be one of the most beautiful expressions of devotion towards Vaishnavas that exists within the Vaishnav library. Beautiful, beautiful. And so he was reformed. And you'll find many other examples of pastimes where they have there's a, the, the offense against Srila Haridas Thakur by Gopal Chakravarti, who also received uh, the punishment of receiving leprosy, like that. So there, and of course, he also begged forgiveness after due course of time. But one should be very careful not to offend the Vaishnavas. Now, one may think, well, you know, I've offended the Vaishnavas before, and I don't have any leprosy. Hmm. Well, the interesting thing is that in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, where you see that the offenders immediately got a very strong reaction for their Vaishnava aparad. Because of Lord Chaitanya's personal presence, it's mentioned I think by Vrindavan Das Thakur, or one of the Acharyas, that the Lord speeded up the activities of the living entities. In other words, if someone performed devotional service in an exemplary way, sometimes they got immediately, they got love of God. The Lord would immediately give them love of God just by being pleased with them. They wouldn't have to go through the whole process of purification. The Lord bestowed his mercy in a very direct way, and they received love of God. And the opposite is also indicated here with his presence, is that when people offended Vaishnavas, they immediately got their reactions, and not in due course of time. But it is mentioned that unless one becomes repentant, for committing offenses to Vaishnavas, especially to Brahmanas or to advanced Vaishnavas, reactions are waiting for that person in the future. They will come in due course of time. 
And of course, the immediate reaction is that one cannot associate with devotees. The Lord becomes very angry and upset by persons who find fault with Vaishnavas. And he punishes them immediately by removing them from the association of devotees. So uh, this is very instructive. <laughs> Uh, therefore, we say in Krishna consciousness, uh, be a bee, don't be a, a fly. It's, it, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said something interesting. He said, if the faults of others cause disturbance with you, then look within yourself and see what is the cause of you becoming disturbed. If the faults of others cause you disturbance, look within yourself and see what is it about you that is causing you to become disturbed. Now that's very powerful. So there is something about us that causes us to become disturbed by others' faults. And sometimes we react and uh, and sometimes, as we say, blaspheming really means a person has no faults, but still we find fault. The example was when Daksha worked, came into the assembly of many saints and sages and demigods to perform a yagya, Lord Shiva was also there. Now, Lord Shiva was the son-in-law of Daksha he had married Sati, which was one of Daksha's daughters. But Daksha wasn't so happy about that marriage because he didn't arrange it. It was actually Lord Brahma who recommended to Daksha, you marry your daughter Sati to Lord Shiva. And Lord Brahma is the father of Daksha. So Daksha obeyed his father and gave his daughter to Lord Shiva. But he always had this negative feeling towards Lord Shiva. So when he came into the assembly, everyone rose. Daksha was such a powerful person. He had such charisma. He was very beautiful. And he was very, very attractive looking in all good qualities. And he had power. And as soon as he walked in, everybody immediately stood up, just automatically, without even thinking. They just arose. But Shiva didn't. Shiva was in meditation. Daksha became offended that, that Shiva didn't honor him when he came in. And therefore, he started finding fault with Shiva. Shiva didn't do anything, but Shiva at one point left the assembly. And that's a whole pastime where later on, Sati, angry at her father for offending, burnt up her body in, in the fire of yoga. She performed severe yoga and was able to raise the fire within her body and it incinerated her whole body. And that caused Lord Shiva to become extremely angry and he retaliated against Daksha. That's mentioned in the very beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam fourth canto. The first seven chapters of that, of that canto just talks about Daksha Yagya and what happened to Lord Daksha due to that offense. The Lord Daksha again, uh, he received another body, came back as Daksha again later on. And what did he do? He offended Narada Muni. <laughs> he offended Narada Muni. So, uh, of course, the reactions were not the same. Narada did something that Daksha did not like, and then he found fault with Narada. <laughs> And Prabhupada talks about that. It's really interesting. And that's also in the, that's in the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, where Narada was instructing the sons of Daksha not to, not to get into married life, not to get entangled with household life, but stay brahmacharis. And Daksha, he was a progenitor. He created these sons in order for them to enter into household life and bring about the population. And so coming in contact with Narada Muni, uh, 10, 20,000 sons of uh, Daksha 
were influenced by Narada Muni, gave up their idea of taking household life and uh, took renounce order of life and never came back to their, their home. Daksha was angry about that. And um, he spoke a little offensively to Narada. Narada didn't take any offense. He cursed Narada. He said, Narada, because of your activities, you will not be able to remain in one place more than three days. Narada accepted that, that so-called curse as a benediction, and therefore Narada Muni is always traveling here and there. Prabhupada also talks about that in a very interesting way in that particular pastime where he says, he said, uh, one of my missions in spreading Krishna consciousness is to translate the Srimad Bhagavatam and to give the Bhakti Vedanta purports. But I'm always having difficulty with the parents of my disciples. They are always, uh, you know, finding fault with me for whatever reason, because I'm taking their children and making them into devotees. So, um, therefore, I have been cursed by the parents of my disciples that uh, I cannot remain in one place for a long period of time. But in order to translate Srimad Bhagavatam, I need to do that. So I have taken my this curse that was put upon me and I'm giving it to my sannyas disciples and they can take the curse and travel everywhere. So for the sannyas order of life, it's meant that one travels. <laughs> Prabhupada, it's a very cute little way Prabhupada describes how he was also cursed by the disciples of his, the, the parents of his disciples. Interesting pastime. But anyway, you'll find throughout the Srimad Bhagavatam and also Chaitanya Charitamrita and in many of the Puranas, a lot of activities where offenses go on and the reactions are quite serious. It's meant to teach us why are these pastimes there, teach us that it's very, very uh, destructive in our spiritual life to find fault with Vaishnavas, either physically, verbally. In the mind, it's not a fault, but if you leave it in the mind, it will grow into something where it will take active participation either by speaking it or by performing some activity which is offensive. So as soon as one starts to feel uh, critical of others, drop it <laughs> and think about Krishna, think about the good qualities of others. It's not important. We might think it's so important, but it's not important. <laughs> Just like we have the example of uh, Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Uh, when someone would come to him and speak some faults about uh, somebody, he would say, is that person chanting Hare Krishna? And they would say, yes. Then he has all good qualities. That's all. <laughs> so he would never listen to faults. In our Krishna Consciousness Society, we had one very glorious devotee who was recognized by Srila Prabhupada as one of the most greatest devotees that ever came into Prabhupada, and that was Jayananda Prabhu. Jayananda, he was always serving the Lord, serving the devotees 24 hours a day. He was constantly engaged in service. And one of the things he would not do is listen to people speaking bad about another. He would never speak bad about anybody. But if someone else was and he was around, he would immediately leave. He wouldn't even say anything. He would just turn and leave. And then that person got the indication, oh, Jayananda is leaving. It must, must be because we are speaking wrongly. So, yeah, so he... So we see how the great souls react to hearing offenses. Now, there's another aspect to this whole principle, and this is very important to understand, that a parent has to find fault with their children in order to correct them. 
A teacher has to find fault with his students in order to correct them. A guru has to find fault with his disciples in order to correct them. This is not offensive. This is a corrective way by pointing out wrong activities and therefore applying the medicine, which is the right activities in the form of instruction, guidance, teachings like that. So unless we're in these categories of guru, teacher, or parent, and it's always, it's only relegated to those who are, are what we say, charges, those that we have responsibility to take care of, finding fault then is not finding fault, it's simply corrective. The a person walks into a doctor's office and the doctor says, you have this disease. Is he finding fault? No. He's pointing out what is wrong and he will administer the medicine to cure the disease in the same way. This is how a these categories of people are given this responsibility to correct and guide those who are, are under their care. But it's not done in a malicious or an envious way. It's done as in a loving way in order to bring that person to uh, the standard of activity. Okay, this is a very, very broad category. And we tried to touch a little bit of some of these points. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, wonderful class, very thoughtful class, very meaningful class. It helped me a lot. I'm sure it helped all the devotees. And there's a meaning of Apara, you know, coming from, uh, I'm a Bengali, so we say all the time this word, Aparat Corona, don't do Aparat, don't. And it's so interesting to understand the real meaning of Rad and Aparat. It's wonderful. And everything that you said, wonderful stories of Daksha, Daksha, wonderful stories of Bhrigu Maharaj. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Devotees, if you have any questions, you may ask uh, Maharaj now. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, my basis is to you. Thank you for the class. It's a lot to think about. It's interesting. Uh, I have a situation that uh, is related that just came up. Uh, I've been uh, practicing massage for 35 years. That's. Uh, I don't really need to do massage anymore. I'm in a nice uh, Vaishnav community. And if there's any devotees who want massage, uh, I'll massage them, you know, and, and, uh, based on what I think they can afford, they, they give me remunerations. So um, I uh, had a request for a massage and uh, was massaging this uh, God brother of yours, God, you know, disciple of Prabhupada. And, um, you know, you don't have to have conversation during a massage, but conversation came up if the uh, client starts talking. Anyway, it was slightly uncomfortable, the conversation. Um, and there at the end of the massage, the person uh, maybe was trying to clarify himself a little bit, possibly. And he said to me, you know, I'm not against ISKCON, but I I'm just against the GBC. And, um, you know, my Guru Maharaj is on the GBC, as well as many other exalted Maharajas who I, uh, you know, respect so much. So then the person certainly wants to get more massages. And uh, I don't want to offend the devotee by saying, you know, I'm uncomfortable doing this massage. Maybe I shouldn't give you massages. If there's no conversation, that's fine. I think I can do my service. But there might be conversation brought up. I'm just not sure how to uh, approach it. So I don't um, offend this, this de devotee. And, uh, and yet, so I'm honoring my Guru Maharaj, my Guru Maharaj also. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a quandary whether to continue with that service 
or take and take the chance that some unpleasant conversation might come up where you find yourself listening. You can't get away because you're doing the service. Yeah. Uh, if you weren't doing that service, it would be easy to excuse yourself. And you could use many ways to excuse yourself from the, that association. Um, well, what you could do is, if you know how to do it, is change the subject every time it comes up. <laughs> and bring it to something pleasant, something devotional. Taking what the person says and turn it around into something else. Um, if you do it in such a way that it doesn't look like you're trying to off uh, offend that person by doing it, but just gradually taking the conversation into something more. Uh, sometimes a person will get the message, oh, yeah, I shouldn't be talking like this. Or they might also just stop talking or they may maybe even become a little upset that you're not staying on the page they're, they're on. So it's a risk and you have to kind of judge that. Um, I'm thinking. I guess, I guess the, e the easiest thing is to avoid uh, that particular association by finding ways not to do that service <laughs> and then you're you know you're not gonna because if you listen to it it's not good because even if we listen to something we know is not true there's an element of poison that comes from that that can also cause us to have some doubts or feel the same way in such, in some ways. That can also happen. That's why it's not good to listen to that. But try to, if you want to go back into that service, then I would suggest you change the subject if it comes up. Or to be on the offensive, to you know, broach a subject yourself and make that the conversation. Okay. But uh, I think the easiest way is to avoid that service. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. I hope that helps. <laughs> yes. Please, Maharaj, accept my humble obeisances. Thank you for a very interesting and enlightening class. Hare Krishna. Please, Maharaj, bless me so that I may never commit Vaishnava offense and I may rapidly advance in Krishna consciousness. You want to hear a formula? Yes. Yeah, Lord Chaitanya gave the formula. Just yes. continuously chant Hare Krishna. That's all. Thank you very much. And you will never. I was having a question. You yes. will never commit offenses. Yes. I'm sorry. I was having a question related to the class. Okay. Yes. yes when we commit offenses against a Vaishnava, the Lord gets dissatisfied and very much angry against us. So the then Lord Vishnu is none other than Lord Shri Krishna, and the Lord Shiva is also a pure devotee of the Lord. So why did not Lord Vishnu? Did, so why did Lord Vishnu did not get and got angry or dissatisfied with Brigomuni when Brigomuni gone to Garbodaksha Vishnu? Well, the Lord wanted to. The Lord understood that the Brahmins were considered to be saintly. And therefore, he, he didn't want to, because Briga was a Brahmin. So the Lord, you know, immediately accepted what Briga did as the activity of a Brahmin. <laughs> others, might say there, others might say that the Lord understood what was going on, and he wanted to show that he is the supreme personality of Godhead. 
But if you see the deity of Lord Jagannath, you'll see in one section of Jagannath's body on his chest, there's a footprint. And so he wears the footprint of Brigu on his chest as his ornament. Okay. Oh, so that's the Lord. Yes, it's very merciful. Thank you very much. Nanak Pradam. Hare Krishna. Any last minute questions? Hare Krishna Mara. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for another wonderful class. I just had a, a small question, or maybe a small question, I don't know. <laughs> um, when you were speaking um, about Lord Chaitanya, when Lord Chaitanya was on the planet, that um, devotees experienced, you know, reactions um, very quickly or, you know, um, res the results of their actions very quickly. And I, I've always wondered if that was the case um, when Srila Prabhupada was here as well. Hmm. To me, to me, to answer that would be speculation. Mm -hmm. But the presence of a very powerful acharya does speed up the reactions of people's activities. That's true with Lord Chaitanya. He's the supreme personality of Godhead. And it's, that's mentioned. But using philosophical speculation, one could say that, you know, the benefits one receives from devotional service in the presence of a great soul are great, greater. And the and the reactions one gets from wrong activities in the presence of a great soul is also greater. It appears to apply in that case. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Koti Koti Dhanvat Pranam, Srila Prabhupada Srila Guru Dev Ki Jai, Shri Radha Bhavana Ki Jai, Hante Koti Dhanvat Pranam Maharaj, very very inspiring class, each and every uh, Thursday you are uh, given a blessing to all of us, Hare Krishna, Koti Koti Dhanvat Pranam. Hare Krishna, Hare uh, Krishna, Sri Devi, you have a question? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you. Thank you so much for reminding us about how important it is to be very careful in our dealings with the Vaishnavas who are so dear to the Lord. I have a question. We have felt ourselves hurt or in some way disturbed or offended. And if we are confiding about that with another Vaishnav or Vaishnavi in order to feel some pacification or solace or comfort or even to understand, you know, how to overcome it. So we are relating something with someone did, which is not nice, not pleasant. Is that an offense by word to that Vaishnav or Vaishnavi whom we are talking about? Prabhupada said, don't be disturbed by the instrument of your karma. Mm. That's brought out in the first canto. If you, if someone does something to you that's unpleasant and you blame that person for it, you get a reaction for that. Mm. That person may just be an instrument to deliver what you need to get. That person will also suffer for acting like that, but it's all been, it's an all, the whole thing is an arrangement. And you should see it like that, that 
or what can I learn from this? Or what is Krishna trying to teach me? You know, so many things. A devotee can benefit from apparent negativity. So we should, when even when we are speaking that, we should try to have a loving exchange where we are receiving confidential instructions saying, please help me to overcome, help me to understand this, and please help me to become a better Vaishnavi. Through... Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very it's not easy, especially if you, you feel offended. But there is something there you can gain from. And devotees are generally forgiving. They don't take offense. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Diptesh. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Diptesh, I committed an offense against you. Oh no, Maharaj. You can yes. never do so. I threw you out of Tuesday and made you. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I Maharaj, do... no, no. I had to do that in order for me to facilitate something else. And I was hoping I would could could reschedule you at another date, but then it caused so much problem. So please forgive me for for my uh, for my bad management. Oh, Maharaj, please don't say that. I think it's a mercy. Uh, somehow or the other, Krishna had planned. So please don't say that, Maharaj. Uh, I was hoping and I would get to go to your home anyway, despite all my bad management. So Maharaj, I think this was a wonderful uh, class uh, with a strong messaging, which, which we all require reminding and imbibing every day. Um, Maharaj, uh, following on Sri Devi Mataji's uh, question, um, sometimes uh, when we are dealing with devotees who are on our same level, um, uh, as friends, if we see them doing something not right, or if we see something that we need to tell them for their proper behavior, uh, or, or even to neophytes, uh, for example, um, should we think that we should, that by telling them that you know we should, you know they might feel offensive, we shouldn't be doing this. Uh, it's better not to say things rather than being coming across to them as offensive. But on the other hand, you think that, you know, they are doing something wrong or something not in the right way that that could be improved. Uh, how do we approach this? Because I've seen many devotees who would not, I mean, I've seen many devotees who would say that uh, it's best not to say to them and cause an offense. But then at the same time, you are, you know, something is wrong, but you don't want to say this because you think that somebody might be feel offensive about it. If it benefits other people, then you might find some way to speak it. In other words, if someone's committing an offense and is causing disharmony or discourse in the society of devotees, then it has to be corrected. Whether you do it or someone else does it, it needs to be done. If you think you can't do it without causing them to become upset, which will only cause them to commit more offenses, then it could be done when some, by someone else who maybe can easily talk to that person where you may not have that privilege or that relationship. If you have that relationship, it can be done in a very sensitive way. But a lot of times it's not necessary. Just let it go. You have to see whether it's causing harm to others or not. Maharaj, thank you. It's not an easy answer. There's no, there's no pat answer for that. You have to find the solution by using your intelligence to apply how to either deal with it, neglect it, or just tolerate it. 
but as a principal maharaj uh, yes uh, there are different ways to do it and it's quite challenging and com- it depends on uh, situations but as a principal if something is not right then rather than thinking not to do any action uh, it's it, it is better to to either inform someone or either if it's your relationship work then you do it yourself but to actually do something about it rather than not doing it because you may feel that this is offensive mm-hmm. just like there's one person i know is very offensive and he sends me emails complaining about everybody or complaining about this or complaining about that complaining about this so i learned about his character through someone else so when he sends me the emails i see the name i hit the delete button that's all <laughs> I don't even but other people know he he's like that and he carries on for some reason he keeps going with his ways of but other people ignore him some like what he says because for whatever reason but it's been understood that he's very critical so I just hit the delete button. <laughs> so we can also delete ourselves out of that association. <laughs> If there's nobody to complain to, then there's no then they can't continue. I get these I get these emails regularly because he knows me just by knowing me. So he's he, he's in, enthusiastic to speak to all the devotees who are leaders and yasis about his ways of understanding situations and other devotees and he wants an audience but if you don't give him an audience I never respond to any of his emails in fact after learning about him it's just the delete button is my only button when i get the email <laughs> so i mean we can't do that when we're in person but we can also remove ourselves if, in some way or other like i mentioned jayananda he he would just leave when somebody was criticizing others or if they're acting wrongly Well, if it's, like if it's your it's a family member then you maybe you have some responsibility to help the situation okay maharaj thank you this has clarified to some extent thank you it requires a lot of thought when it comes up and perceiving the possible reaction before the activity yes and that requires some thought some intelligence but if we become like the offender then it becomes worse you know. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Any last minute questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj it member of this is all good morning um thank you so much for the instructions maharaj thank you hari bol hari bol shama gori how are you <laughs> good maharaj all your mercy when are you coming to us I'm planning to come in the first two weeks of September. Yeah, please do come to Charlotte. 
if I can get to the US with no problem, I'll be looking at the map of North Carolina. <laughs> yes. Please come, Maharaj. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, if it was totally up to me, I would say yes, but there's so many other factors. So let's see what happens. Yeah, no problem. We will pray that you should come to Charlotte and give us your association. If you give me my same room. Uh, Maharaj, we, um, our Chagannath has moved to a new house. Oh, you have a new house now. Yes. Oh, so that's there is a special room for you. In the, ba in the basement, right? Uh, no, it's uh, in the second floor. <laughs> okay. Let's see what Krishna arranges. I'm trying to come. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, we can in now, Mataji. Yes, Mataji. I don't see Nina Mataji on the call. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for such a wonderful uh, session and very relevant topic, very important for all of us to uh, understand uh, Vaishnava Parad and be careful about it and avoid it. Uh, so if there are no more questions, we'd like to end the call here. Vancha kalpata rubhyascha kripa Grantrat Srimad Bhagavatam Swami Maharaj Ki